Hi, I'm Debbie with Nixine Publishing, and we're continuing our series about graphene with Adrian Nixon, who is editor in chief of, of the Nixine Journal, coming to us from Yorkshire, England. Today, we're going to talk about um, something that's a little bit different. Um, I have another question for you, which is can graphene help keep our food safe? Short answer is yes. There's a lot of work going on at the moment looking at graphene in plastics, polymers uh, that are used in food packaging. The big problem you've got in food packaging is, uh, well, there are a number of problems. You, you'd like the, ideally, you'd like the material you uh, put the food in to be very clean and also transparent so you can see what's going on inside. Um, but also, it's got to keep it fresh. So the way a lot of food producers work, they'll put a, um, a gas in which uh, doesn't interact with the food and pressurizes it slightly. And usually that is nitrogen. So you're using that to exclude oxygen. So you probably noticed you get a bag of crisps. I think you call them chips in the States. That they're, um, they're in, usually in a metallized foil bag and they're pressurized slightly. You probably noticed that. I just thought it was air. I didn't know it was like nitrogen. It's nitrogen from the air, so they exclude the oxygen, and that keeps the uh, the crisps or the chips fresh and crunchy when you open the bag. And it's metallized foil bag because um, they coat the surface of the plastic with a very tiny film of metal to actually increase the porosity to stop the gas from leaking out. Otherwise, it ends up like a party balloon. You know, with these helium balloons, they just deflate over time. Yeah. That's, that, that's what would go on. And then the oxygen would get in as the nitrogen came out, and then your food would go off. You don't, with soggy crisps that taste a bit sour, nobody wants that. Yeah. The problem is that the metallized foil works okay, but it can't re be recycled very easily because the bag is sort of like, um, it's got a plastic bit, a metal bit, and other things going on, various inks and things. So um, the, the moment, certainly in the UK, I don't know what it's like where you live, we can't recycle these crisp bags. We need a we need a uh, material to make the food packaging out of that is made of materials that are fairly common and uh, well known and understood uh, that are safe, but also we can blend with graphene and make an improvement there. If we think about food packaging, then the, the problem we've got to overcome is if this green box here is just like a cross section of uh, plastic packaging that's used for food, we've got to stop the gases passing through the material. At the moment. Uh, they tend to pass straight through the plastics. So either, either you get oxygen coming in and spoiling the food or nitrogen going out as well. Oxygen and nitrogen are the two main ones. Carbon dioxide is also important to things like beer and things like that. If we look at what graphene composites do, then the graphene nanoplatelets all sort of jumble up and they form what's called a tortuous path. And so now what the gas has to do, it has to sort of navigate all these different little channels and it's a very long, tortuous path to get through. And what that means is it dramatically slows down the passage of gas molecules and it reduces the porosity. Are you with me so far? Yes, it's very fascinating to see how graphene does that. And, and the important thing here is it's gases coming in as well as gases going out. So we need to look at oxygen and nitrogen. Um, I had a look in the literature and I found this uh, research which looks at a polymer called polylactic acid. Polylactic acid sounds a bit chemically. It's actually made from, uh, it's a thermoplastic biopolymer that's made from uh, cornstarch or rice or sugarcane. So it's a renewable plastic and it's already used for um, beverage packaging and food packaging and it's approved by the FDA. These two graphs here, uh, the blue one on this side shows uh, the results with oxygen and on the pink side here shows the results with nitrogen. If we have a look here, the vertical axis is the permeability of the gas. Oxygen over here, nitrogen over here. So the higher the number, the more gas is getting through. So the, the more porous the polymer is. And then along the uh, x-axis at the bottom, we've got um, the yellow bars is just graphene nanoplates, and then graphene oxide is the green bar in both cases. So here we can see the results for oxygen with no graphene added to the polymer, and you can see a lot of gas gets through. Um, but very quickly, as we add quite small amounts of graphene to the mix, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6%, then it does dramatically seem to stop the, um, the gas coming through. And then the same thing over here with nitrogen too, with um, 
the ga uh, again small amounts of graphene or graphene oxide seem to stop the uh, the nitrogen coming through interestingly the work here showed that uh, graphene was probably slightly more efficient than graphene oxide was for nitrogen whereas there's not a massive amount of difference for oxygen here but um debbie there's one thing you pointed out in a previous example about composites which was the less you add is more yes yes and i was noticing on this one that when if zero is what is happening right now with how much um how how fresh food is how, how how long it lasts on the shelf then you could easily look at that chart and say that now you're more than doubling shelf life of food simply by adding some graphene to the packaging on the face of it yes you could do i haven't seen the data which has actually been done with real food because this research was just looking at um passing oxygen gas and nitrogen gas in the lab, so they didn't use food. But you could make that case, Debbie. There's another piece of research which needs to be tagged onto this, which then says, right, let's take this into real food packaging and we'll look at how long we've extended the, uh, the food life uh, for. You're absolutely right. It will extend the, the, uh, the shelf life of the food, no, no doubt about it. How long and is it, what's the relationship between porosity and shelf life pres preservation? We don't know until the lab work's been done, but yes, you're absolutely right. You're on the money there. Wow, that's, that's something else. You add a little bit of graphene and you get such amazing, we have all the superlatives to begin with, and now we have all the amazing results. Yeah, so, yeah. and when we were in uh, DC, we were talking to a company that was putting graphene into polyethylene terephthalate, the PET bottles, and I think they were going to use it for beer, weren't they? <laughs> beer in plastic bottles, imagine that. Yeah, and at the moment it's sold in glasses and cans because they're um, not very porous and it, it's not put in plastic bottles because oxygen gets through and spoils the beer. But put graphene in and hopefully we can get uh, graphene in recyclable plastic bottles. So coming to a shop near you soon. All right, well... Adrian, thank you so much for this great information, and uh, we'll be back again with another episode. Great. See you again, Debbie.